Hey guys, this is Austin and I'm going to share with you how to assemble a dual ball bearing cage for the GT25R all the way up to the GT35R. So real quick, after you've gotten the back piece of the uh, cage off of the uh, shaft, which is not in this video, but I'll link to that one too, uh, you're going to wrap the balls in tape on the cage and then insert it into the back of this cage unit and then you just slowly press it in and then you're just going to remove the tape this is just my preferred way to do it um, you probably could do it by putting grease on the balls and stuff but I've never really done it that way because it just it, this just seems really simple to me anyway And once you've got the tape out, you're just going to go and press it in. Usually I press it on the table, but... but that will work. So you got the back side in. Now for the front side, you're just going to do the same thing. And just make sure you keep the orientation, because you can put them in backwards. Alright, so now after you've gotten the cage assembled, you're going to insert it into the bearing housing. And you're going to make sure that you line up the hole with the dowel pin, the top of the cage. The dowel pin part goes right here. And that's where your oil feed goes. When you go to insert the dowel pin uh, with the oil feed, I always put it so the pin hole is between the two bearing races. and take a socket and put it on top of the restrictor so now that we have the cage installed properly you're going to insert the front seal and I don't know if you've seen me do this before but I always take the back end of it and put the back end down have the open end pointing up and I slide it over. And it goes on. Next, you're going to take oh, the O ring. It's very simple, just lays right in there. And then the front seal plate. Now, take note. If this does not go on properly, the reason probably is because your front seal is the wrong size. If you bought a really cheap kit, if you want to buy the right kit, you can or guarantee that you get the right kit. You can buy one from us if you want to. So just push it straight down and it slides right in. Now you got to install the screws and we use Loctite on that. Now after you've gotten them all tightened and you tighten them down evenly, it's time to insert the turbine shaft. Alright, go to insert the rear seal.
Make sure you use a new rear heat shield and the reason why is because on the GT2860 especially, this thing expands sometimes and it can bend the shaft. Insert the compressor wheel. And the shaft nut. <clears throat> Be sure to add Loctite. On this particular unit, I have it already rotor balanced. So I just have to line up the dots, which really isn't that difficult. There's two different ways to do this. One way is if the compressor wheel is going to move anyway, you can actually preset the compressor wheel. So when you go to tighten it, the, the shaft, I mean the nut and the compressor wheel move. But sometimes you can get away with tightening it where the compressor wheel will stay where it's supposed to, supposed to stay and you don't have to worry about anything. So if we already know the compressor wheel is going to move, we can go ahead and preset this wheel. Which, to preset it, you would set the compressor wheel ahead one fourth turn. Or behind a one fourth turn, I mean. So after you're satisfied with the balance mark on your turbo, go ahead and spin it and make sure that it spins freely. And be sure to hold the sheet shield so it's not stopping it. Now this is a GTX 30 or a GT 3071R compressor wheel or turbo. It's got the uh, 56 by 60 turbine or 55 by 60, and then the compressor wheel is 53 by 71. So if you're looking for any of these parts to build something like this, we actually have everything in stock to make it brand new. So I, I really don't know what you need, but below I'll have a link to a store where you can purchase any of these products that you may need. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.